Hi there. My name is Ryan Tyndale, and uh, I'm an elementary school teacher in Ontario, Canada. I teach uh, this year grade five, and along with teaching in the classroom, I also teach at conferences and workshops. Uh, I've uh, over the last two years, I've taught more than 300 teachers, taught 11 different workshops at um, four different conferences, and. Uh, uh, one of the sites that I, I reference quite often is one called Linoit, L-I-N-O-I-T, or Linoit. I mean, I've heard it pronounced both ways. And Linoit is a is a great website for collaboration and uh, student uh, voice. And I'm constantly teaching teachers this website over and over again. And I thought, you know, why not make a YouTube video that I could direct teachers to uh, that, um, you know, is a similar style to uh, posting similar ideas that I offer in workshops. So this really is a, is a, a complimentary uh, video uh, to, uh, to a workshop that, uh, that I would normally give. So uh, I have a Teachers Pay Teachers website called Teaching Smarter. And in here I have a resource that... Um, that uh, talks a lot about Linoit and gives some examples. Uh, it's a handout from a workshop that I did, so you can go in and download that for free if you choose to. Uh, but the website itself is L-I-N-O-I-T, linoit.com or linoit.com. And uh, you'll go in, you have to create a web, you have to create an account. This is the main site here, you go in and log in. Teaching Smarter, that's the username that I have. Press enter, and it's going to take me to uh, my main page here. Okay, and I've probably got about 30 or 40 different cork boards or Linuit pages that I've used, canvases. Uh, but uh, to create a new one, you go into create a new canvas. If you press control and your tracking ball, this is just an aside for other websites as well, uh, you can zoom in and out. So Create a new canvas. Click on that. It's going to take me to uh, the create page. I'm going to label this one sample uh, 246. Pick your picture. Uh, they've got, you can upload your own image, but it really stretches it out. I, they've got solid colors, but uh, I'm just going to use the standard background for the demo. If this is your own brainstorming page, then keep it private. If uh, if you want to allow, if you want to make it public, but, you know, you, like if this is a lesson plan, for example, but you don't want students to be able to post to it, then show stickies to everyone. But if you want to allow your students to post to it, then you want to click the third one. And this is important. I'm going to show you the boxes that I usually check off. I don't want to be notified when someone posts. Don't need this shown on my own personal doc. Uh, I don't want students to be able to do it through email. I want them to use the website itself in class, so we're going to unclick that. Uh, this one is a flip of a coin. If you want them to take their ideas and post them on their own personal boards, they can do that, but I usually unclick it. These two are generally the only two that I use. Uh, I can, I, or rather, and it's not true, uh, this one here I don't like. Uh, there's public canvases that anyone in the Linuit world can access. I don't. Uh, I don't want them to be able to access this because this is my own. This is our own class ideas. I want students to access it only through the URL and not through public canvases. So I unclick that one. The one that I do use, however, that's really important is I want to allow guests to post stickies. So even if they don't have a Linuit account, I still want them to be able to access it. So I leave that one up. Create the canvas, and then it's going to take you to your main cork board. Okay, now this cork board, you can move it around, and if you look down on the bottom here, it's the cork board is huge. I mean, you can post a lot there. You've got four different colors that start off, and these can be used in different ways. I mean, you could have boys post in pink, girls post in blue. You could have, I have table groupings in my class, so I could have table one or group one use yellow, Group two, use uh, green, vice versa. I've used this for quizzes 
where, uh, you know, a, a group quiz, so group number one, their answer, they would post it in green, and then I would give them the, you know, the green group, their mark appropriately. Uh, click on your sticky. I'm going to ask them, tell me about your weekend. What did you do? Uh, I'll tag myself, Mr. T. You can change the font size here. You can change the color. There's a lot more than four colors. Uh, we'll keep it with, with, with just blue. Post it. Okay. You can change the size. If you want to get it a really big one, you want to narrow it down, that's fine. You can rotate the sticky. You can pin the sticky. You pin it, that means you can't move it. I can't move this right now, but if I unpin it, then I can move my sticky around. Uh, down here is the edit page. So if you want to go in and edit your sticky, you can do that. And there's some other points down here that I, I honestly don't use in my own classroom. If you want to get rid of the sticky, let's say someone posts something that's inappropriate or it's a duplicate idea, then I can peel the sticky off. Okay. So I'm going to put that up here. And I want students to be able to access this. So to do that, I have to give them this URL. Now, the URL is linuit.com uh, slash user slash teaching smarter slash canvas slash sample percentage 20246. And before you give me a thumbs down thinking that's ridiculous, let me show you how to shorten that. Okay? I've got to find a URL shortener. And there's a whole bunch of them. The one that I use is bit.ly. B-I-T dot L-Y. And bit.ly is a free account. You don't need you don't need uh, to register for it, but if you do register, I'll show you something really cool that you can use. Uh, so I take my long link, I copy, I paste it into the URL shortener, and then it does it automatically. And so it took my I'm going to zoom in using Control and my tracking ball. It took this long, you know, I don't know if there's 40 or 50 characters there. It takes that and it shortens it to bit.ly slash 1WH capital XUYY. So if I take this and I copy it and I put it up here, control V or paste, press enter, it will take me to my corkboard. And so now students in the class will, you know, 24, 26 students will each have their own laptop and now they all have access to my cork board and they can now tell me about their own weekend. So what they do exactly the same way, student would write, I went to the fair, period. They can tag their name if they want to or they can keep it private. Now, I'm going to press post and then I'm going to switch over to my other tab up here. And let's pretend this is the student's cork board and this one up here will be my cork board. So I'm going to post it. I'm going to click over here and you can see that it hasn't posted. Now it should post, I don't know, 5 to 10 seconds, 15 seconds. But what I'll do is I, I just refresh. So as students are posting every minute or so, I'll press refresh and then you'll start to get other students work. And there's their idea right there. So I can take that one and I can slide it over. Um, one important thing, the user, uh, the creator of the, the cork board is the only one that can delete. Students can delete their own, but they can't delete others. And that's important. Students can also move their own. So let's pretend if this is the, you know, this is the student's one, they can move their page, their post, but they won't be able to move other people's. Uh, only the, the teacher can do that. So you can see over here, I slid this one over. It hasn't shown up on mine yet, so I'll press refresh, and it should pop it over to the right, and there you go. Okay, so just a few different ways uh, to use the site. It's a, it's a really neat, really neat site. If you want to uh, post a picture, you can post a picture there. Uh, if you want to post a video, a, you know, a YouTube link, if you want to post a document like a PDF for students to open, you can do that as well. But um, that's just a one, two, three on how to use the website. Uh, if 
if you're more interested in it, you know, and you're curious how it can be used uh, specifically for math, I'll post a video. I'll put the link on the left-hand side here. Uh, that should come in the next week or so. Uh, I'll post one as well for language arts, uh, for literacy or English or whatever, however you refer to it in your own classroom. Uh, I'll give you a way that I've used Bitly in my, or uh, Linuit in my classroom for that. Oh, which reminds me, uh, one other neat point. If you create an account in Bitly, you can create customized links. So if I go down here and I put uh, weekend homework, and it would be 246, for example, and I press create, now it's taken that bit.ly link that was, you know, 26YYX42, and it's made it bit.ly slash weekend homework 246. So I'll put this right up on my whiteboard in the classroom. Students, you know, they punch that in, copy, paste, there's the weekend homework. They would write that into their U URL bar, press enter, and it will take them right to the corkboard. Okay. So that's just a quick way of, of how of a quick overview of it, and uh, I'll give you some other ways to use it more detailed uh, in the coming week. All right. Thanks kindly for watching. Uh, all the resources here are free. Uh, you can go in and download them as you'd like. You choose to follow me as well. Uh, you'll get updates every time I post something new. You can also subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel, and you'll get uh, the notifications as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day. And remember to use technology to teach smarter.